Hello and welcome to this lesson, which will provide you with an overview of change management governance and the role of the PMO or Program Management Office. After you have finished this lesson, you will be able to firstly, learn what a PMO is and what it does. Secondly, discover how to set up effective change management governance. And thirdly, understand the role of the PMO in the program management process. To begin with, let's remind ourselves of the change framework you covered in Lesson 1. You will recall that the governance and PMO part oversees the change program, providing an essential support structure in terms of governance, roles, processes and decision rights. Most change programs will require governance, but the degree of support will be determined by a program's scope and complexity. If a change program is to operate across multiple businesses or functions with multiple stakeholders, with a large scope of initiatives and long duration, then it is likely to need a formal, separate governance structure. However, Existing internal governance structures may be sufficient if the change effort is small in size and scope, or is limited to one business or function. The governance and PMO team provides the essential support structure to the change program. They are responsible for program roles, responsibilities, reporting lines, and engagement model. The PMO team basically coordinates the program in a consistent manner and ensures timings and milestones are being met. Governance and PMO are essential in any significant change effort because they will enlist senior leaders to be enthusiastic catalysts for change, make accountability explicit and provide correct and timely information at the steering committees. They ensure that people receive the right information are having the right conversations and are making the right decisions. The organization chart on the right of the slide shows where the governance and PMO team would usually sit within a change program structure, just under the executive sponsors and overall steering committee, but overseeing the different initiatives within the change program. You'll learn more about the steering committee later. You can define governance as the organizational structure and process established to launch and oversee a change effort. Such a process will encapsulate the following. Firstly, a clearly articulated vision or goal and associated targets. Secondly, a program structure with well-defined accountabilities, including roles and responsibilities. Thirdly, an engagement model or working framework that specifies what will and will not be governed. Fourthly, an indication of timelines and phasing of work for the overall portfolio. And lastly, the establishment of a PMO with a well-defined and widely understood mandate to shepherd the change program. The Program Management Office is responsible for the key activities that are critical to the success of a change program. That means ensuring the change program is aligned with the organization's strategic objectives and is on track to achieve its targets. At a practical level, the PMO designs the change program and provides central coordination and provides initiative owners with quality control and cross-functional support and the PMO will provide a consistent program-wide view of progress and interdependencies, and will manage communications and stakeholders. Note that the PMO is not an approver of new initiatives, and it does not normally own or manage individual change initiatives. A PMO adds value to the change program in many ways. Firstly, it can provide visibility and transparency into the program for senior leaders and detect when initiatives have gone off target and need executive intervention. Secondly, a good PMO will focus on results, not activities, 
which means assessing what resources and capabilities are needed and assessing how the program is moving towards its goals. Thirdly, by fostering alignment and accountability amongst the senior leadership team, which entails locking down commitments to key milestones. Fourthly, a PMO adds value via a lean governance structure, which means doing only what is sufficient and keeping any bureaucracy to a minimum. Fifthly, through standardized templates and methodologies to track progress and a single, independent source of communication to key stakeholders. And lastly, a PMO adds value by setting the initiative teams up for success via training and the coordination of any dependencies across initiatives, functions or relevant experts. In this next section, you will discover how to set up effective governance. The first step in launching the PMO is to select the type required for your program. A process PMO is suitable when the organization is highly capable, with strong execution capabilities, and the program is of limited complexity. Here, the PMO would provide administrative support to decision makers such as the collation of project data. A value PMO is suitable when the organization has limited capabilities and a mixed track record of change success. Here the PMO would be actively involved in project delivery and proactively respond to project milestones. And an accountable PMO is suitable when the change program is either very small or narrow in scope and the PMO delivers all the content work. This type of PMO is often used when high discretion is required, as the PMO does not directly engage with the rest of the organization. After the PMO type is selected, the scope of its activities should be explicitly defined. Otherwise, the PMO will naturally take on more work. The slide shows some examples of in-scope and out-of-scope activities. Next step in setting up effective governance is to determine the resources required for the PMO. This will be determined by factors such as the program size and complexity, the organization's existing change capabilities, the speed of the program, and how quickly results are expected, and the talent and resources available to the organization. Typically, greater resources will be needed for sophisticated programs, when the organization has limited existing change capabilities and when change needs to happen fast. The slide shows an example of a PMO structure and resourcing. The number of roles will very much depend on the program size and complexity. Notice how some roles may only be needed on a part-time basis. The final step in setting up effective governance is to define the key responsibilities within the PMO. These should be agreed at the program outset. It is likely that every PMO team has a backbone of a leader, support team and finance representative, but other departmental representatives should only be involved if the situation demands it. For example, a departmental reorganization would involve role and personnel changes. Therefore, an HR liaison officer would be part of the PMO. In this last section of the lesson, you will look at the role of the PMO in the program management process. The slide outlines the key steps taken by the PMO. Firstly, the PMO needs to ensure that the governance structure outlines the main reporting lines for the program, the clear roles and expectations in ownership of the initiatives, and the frequency of meetings. After aligning the governance structure, the PMO then helps coordinate initiative planning across the program. At program launch, 
the PMO then begins tracking and reporting by consolidating and managing critical information. And lastly, the PMO is also responsible for the issue resolution process and will orchestrate the escalation of critical issues to the senior leadership. Any unresolved issues are escalated up through the executive sponsors, then to the steering committee, and as a last resort, the CEO. For more information on this process, please refer to the program execution lesson. Let's conclude this section of the lesson by highlighting some key success factors and best practices when running your PMO. Less really is more when it comes to assessing initiatives. What is the minimum that is necessary to achieve the program's aims? And which initiatives will drive the most value? Also, be honest about what you are undertaking and the scale of the task ahead. Take care not to oversell expectations and the work required. Remember that change is tough and that people will look to you for support. Listening can often be a lot more helpful than talking. And when issues or problems arise, bring the right people together as soon as possible to find a solution. Walking the floors or connecting face-to-face -face with key stakeholders helps to build relationships and helps you to identify change champions across the organization. In times of crisis, it helps to know who your supporters are. To summarize this lesson, you have looked at the governance and PMO elements of change management. You have understood that governance is the organizational structure and process established to launch and oversee a change effort and that to launch an effective PMO, you need to select the type of PMO appropriate to the program, define the scope of the change program, determine your resource requirements, and agree on the teams and accountabilities. And finally, the PMO is responsible for four key steps of the program management process. These are outlining a robust governance structure, coordinating the initiative planning across the program, tracking and reporting progress, and lastly, managing the issue resolution process. Thank you for participating and see you next time on another exciting business training lesson from Pontema.